Tokyo, 1968, the year of flower power. And although the Japs never had hippies, they had Godzilla. I hate hippies. With Japan's economical rebirth after World War II, it was now the world's second biggest economy. With bottomless bowls of rice and rivers flowing of sake. But it weren't that way for everyone. Meet 19-year-old Norio Nagiyama. By all accounts, growing up, his family lived in adverse poverty, often sleeping on the streets. His father were a laborer and his mother took in laundry. Norio found it difficult to cope with the mental attrition he felt witnessing such obscene new wealth. While his family went to sleep at night hungry, it was one day after work when his father, complaining of chest pains, was rushed to the hospital, but told that he'd have to wait for the men in suits to be seen to first. Three hours later, he died in the waiting room. His mother said that night, the switch in his son's head were turned off, and he changed. It was two weeks later, after his father's death, that he went on a day trip to the suburbs of Tokyo, where the American military personnel lived, and he burgled a home. And although in Japan very difficult to find, he obtained a revolver with 50 bullets. From there, he went into the center of Tokyo, got into a cab, and held up a driver, demanding all his money. And although the driver obliged, he still shot him twice in the face, taking $40 from the poor bastard and his cab. Norio Nagayama was officially a killer, and he didn't even leave a tip. But he did leave a dead cabbie dumped on the street with his name and the number of his cab in his wallet. Police were now in pursuit of the killer. Driving to Kyoto, he ended up stopping at a temple to pray and shot a parishioner who got nosy. Realizing he'd made the headlines of every paper, he drove to Osaka to lay low. But running out of funds, he robbed another cabbie with one shot to the back of the head. When they found the body, the hands were still stuck to the wheel. His final murder were in Hiroshima. Running out of gas money, Nagayama tried to board a train. But when a cop recognized him, he filled him full of lead and was arrested a week later, lining up for a movie, probably a Japanese movie. His month-long killing spree was over. Once in custody, he admitted what he'd done and said he was remorseful and ashamed of his crimes. When being sentenced, because he was a juvenile under Jap law, he was spared the death penalty and given life in prison. Once in prison, Nagayama realized he was spared the fate that he'd given his victims, and he turned his life around and became a celebrated novelist, writing several best-selling novels with the underlying theme in all of them being redemption. But in a twist of fate, almost 30 years since he'd been spared the death penalty, guards approached the prisoner while he was eating his breakfast and announced that it was time. They walked the shocked novelist and prisoner down two flights of stairs to the basement. His tales of redemption didn't save him in the end. When asked if he had any last words, he said he wanted to donate everything from his last novel to the poor children. And his last novel, released after his death, was not surprisingly his best selling. A most recent estimate is that those royalties put over 6,000 Japanese children through university. Me? I don't believe in atonement. I think it's like offering a stranger a bite of your hot dog and think it's gonna make you friends. It ain't. And forgiveness? Forgiveness ain't my business. But I do believe some people truly get caught up in the whirlwind. And maybe Norio Nagayama was one of those people. Thank <laughs> you.